Hey, Walking Dead fans, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a news video, just some little tidbits from around the Walking Dead universe with the actors, with the show. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. The support is much appreciated. Like, share, hit the little bell, all that good stuff. Really appreciate all of that. Hey, everyone, I just finished doing the voice recording for Walking Dead Onslaught. So first up, and I'm getting this one, it's all over the net, but I'm getting mine from SuperheroHype.com. And it says, Norman Reedus confirms his role in The Walking Dead Onslaught. It's been a little over a year since AMC announced that it was teaming up with a game maker for a new VR game set in The Walking Dead universe. But now, the studio has just revealed that the game is currently in the final stages of development. Plus, they announced that a beloved character from the TV series will be part of the story. Via their official YouTube page, the game maker confirmed that Norman Reedus will reprise his role as Daryl Dixon in The Walking Dead Onslaught. Reedus made the announcement after completing his voiceover work for the new game, and it looks like they built a makeshift recording booth in Reedus' own basement um, because of the pandemic and stuff. Reedus teased he screamed his head off, so expect Daryl to run into some tight situations when the game finally hits the stores. There should be some new gameplay footage before the summer's end, and it's possible they could share it during next month's San Diego Comic-Con at home festivities. I'm sure The Walking Dead is going to be a part of that, or AMC and Walking Dead, and uh, hopefully some Rick movie announcements and some other stuff will come as well. And there should be some other cast member announcements some cast members that from the series that are appear in the game and aside from Rita's it should feature Melissa McBride as Carol and Josh McDermott as Eugene and of course the Walking Dead onslaught will be available for PlayStation VR Steam VR and Oculus Rift later this year and Carrie Payton who plays Ezekiel King Ezekiel on the Walking Dead says he remembers visiting the Big Cat Rescue uh, Animal Sanctuary, Carol Baskin's, um, you know, the Netflix documentary, Tiger King, all of that. If you guys watch that, I personally didn't see it. But as you know, King Ezekiel's a former zookeeper and amateur theater actor, and he's role-played as the leader of the kingdom, right? And he had Shiva, a tiger, pet tiger he got from the zoo. And of course, Shiva died, spoiler alert. The Walking Dead co-star of Peyton, Dan Fogler, he has a podcast. He's the guy that plays Luke. He has a podcast called 4D Experience. And Peyton was on that talking, and he was talking about remembering visiting the Big Cat Rescue. He said they were like, you should go to this tiger sanctuary, this big cat sanctuary where they rescue these tigers uh, that have been mistreated. And I was like, sure, let's go down there. And it's Carol Baskin's place, man. So yes, I did. Yes, I did. I didn't meet Carol, but I went there, and that's as close to tigers as I had gotten. And then Peyton added, I've never been in the cage. They say it's probably not best for the animals for people to be interacting with the tigers. I've never even held a baby tiger. I haven't walked with a tiger or anything like that. I'm trying to do what's best for the animals, and me having a photo op with a baby tiger is not the best thing for them, and so I haven't done anything like that. But I have been to the Carol Baskin Sanctuary. And when he got cast for the part, he thought, man, they're probably going to have a real tiger at, um, at least uh, part of the time, maybe, in the show. But, of course, they use CG the entire time. And thank goodness, Shiva, CG Shiva, looked a lot better than that CG deer from way back. But Peyton went on to say, I feel like it's probably a good idea that we didn't get a real tiger because we shoot way too fast on The Walking Dead and that would have just stopped everything bringing a tiger onto set. And Robert Kirkman, creator of The Walking Dead, he had an interview that he said a bunch of different things. I'll go over a few of those items. One is he knows a date. He knows there is a date. There may be a date for the finale of season 10. He just well, this is what he said. The old Walking Dead show will be coming back. We'll be airing... I know dates. I don't think they're public. But we have the finale of season 10. There will be more Walking Dead television for you to watch at some point in the future. So it was kind of vague. <laughs> it was kind of... He did say he knows some dates. Some other stuff that Kirkman said, if you're not familiar with the comic, as the comic ended recently... It debuted in 2003, and it ran for 193 issues. Uh, Kirkman was always asked when it would end, how it would end. He would mostly say it's never going to end. It's going to go on forever. But there at the end, when he did 
finally, in the comics, he actually put out some fake covers, and he even sent them to the distributors, the comic distributors. He didn't tell them the comic was about to end. He didn't tell anybody, but he sent out some fake covers making you think, here are the next few issues, when in reality, the next issue that was coming out was going to be the very last issue. So Kirkman said only about six people knew his plan to end The Walking Dead with issue 193, and some people wasn't very impressed because the largest retailers, DCBS and Midtown Comics, they do a ton of business through mail order, and so they're his most valuable retail partners, and they order the most books, and they had taken a ton of pre-orders for issues that wasn't really going to happen because he was going to end the comic, big surprise. And then, so the retailers then had to cancel all those orders, refund the customers, and so Kirkman said it was a possibly a miscalculation on his part. But he did pull off a pretty big stunt. He says he doesn't really regret it, and he doesn't. He definitely doesn't regret ending The Walking Dead the way he did. Kirkman even talked about how The Walking Dead show influenced The Walking Dead comic or influenced him and vice versa. He said, being in The Walking Dead writer's room was the most humbling experience. It was a lot of fun. You're in a room eight to ten hours a day with six or seven other writers. I think most of them were older than me, too, but all of them more skilled. They've all done more stuff and definitely had more schooling than me. I barely graduated high school, so I'm constantly learning from them. More than that, they're tearing my work apart every day, uh, Kirkman said with a laugh. I'd be like, I get it. There's definitely a problem with that that I had to deal with, and I had to do this and this because of it. It would work better if we did it this way, maybe. But it was a lot of fun, and I can imagine for some people it would be a very frustrating experience, but I do feel like I learned a lot. Kirkman said he joined the television show's writing staff around the time of issue 70, released in 2010, and that's around the time the show started, I guess. But in the comics around issue 70, I think that's when Rick um, takes the survivors into Alexandria. Kirkman said, I think the comic book got better. I think the story's got a lot stronger from there. I'd be like, okay, this is how it works in TV, and this is how you guys have to do it. These are the rules you guys have to follow. I'm going to go home and work on this thing in this fantastic medium you guys barely know about where I can do whatever the hell I want, and then you a-holes are going to have to be copying it in about three years. And we do have some Rick movie news. Um, it's been out for a little bit as far as this piece, but Shane uh, Walsh, the character Shane, it's reported that John Bernthal will be returning to his role as Shane in the Rick movie, at least the first one, but we don't know exactly how that's going to be or how it's going to play out. The sources to uh, the article said there are plans for Shane to appear in one of the Walking Dead movies, probably the first one. We're told that flashbacks will be used to jump back in time, meaning Bernthal will be invited on board to reprise his role. We don't know how large his part will be in the film, but presumably it would amount to an extended cameo at most. And I understand why they would probably want to do that is because John Bernthal is a big name at this point. Um, he's d went on and done a lot of other things and gained a lot of other fans and an audience. And the Shane character is a big character as well that people really like. I just did a, a Shane video, What If Shane Lived?, and of course, that video is is got a lot of comments, got a lot of views, and it's a big subject. People like the character Shane and wonder things like that. What ifs? So then, a little article at UndeadWalking.com ask if we're due for a Rick movie announcement. Like I said, at the SDCC, San Diego Comic Con, and that's the last time, and pretty much the only time during the year we really receive really great information about stuff, but. The questions ask, will more news come during SDCC at home? You know, this year's the pandemic's going on. Um, a Comic-Con is a whole bunch of people stuffed into a civic center or an auditorium or whatever in a bunch of different ones. They have different conferences and panels and they have a you know place you can buy stuff, just, just a huge area. And it's just so many people gathering in one spot. It's like a worse really than like a rock concert or even or something like that so so it's really good that they're doing the sdcc at home thing and that's the place it's always been for big announcements uh, especially about the walking dead 
It's in a good spot to announce stuff, not just for the show, not just for upcoming things, the other shows, Fear, uh, World Beyond, but the Rick movies, you know. So like I said, the SDCC was canceled in May, and we'll go ahead with a virtual edition SDCC at home, which will take place July 22nd through the 26th. So watch out on the net for that stuff, uh, videos, and watching that. So we should have had a trailer for season 11 of The Walking Dead during this time, but they haven't been able to start filming season 11, so there won't be a trailer. And season 11, that should be coming you know, around October, won't be here till 2021. But there should be information released. There should be teaser stuff. There should be information Rick movies and the other shows. There should be actor panels and producer panels. You know, Greg Nicotero, those type of people on the panels. It'd be great to see Andrew Lincoln. And even though there's no dates, and even though we haven't heard anything yet, we're hoping you hear something July 22nd through the 26th. It's looking like 2022 for the movie. But I do agree with what the article said at UndeadWalking.com that AMC needs to make some kind of announcement just so fans know where they are in the process and what's going on and what's happening and where we are and where the shows are and where the actors are and what's just what's happening. Because, you know, with the channel, I can see that a lot of people are losing interest. The, you know, the, the, the ratings and the viewership has went down so much it's going down even farther because they're um, having to delay and stuff. And a lot of it's not their fault as far as the pandemic and the delay of season 11 and the delay of the season 10 finale. The Rick movie's understandable. That's a whole different beast. But fans need to know something. But we can continue this discussion. Anything about the news, anything in this video, or anything else you need to discuss or want to discuss or want to ask or just say hello down in the comments below, and I will join you there. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more dead stuff. Okay, bye.